I was thinking to myself that uh, we were doing uh, the last podcast of the season Mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking about the ending but then as we were praying I saw the beginning it's that interesting Because the end of one season is the beginning of another. (sighs) Literally and figuratively. Yeah. So I saw it. You saw the beginning. I saw the promotion. I suspected when I heard you pray. So the promotion. Isn't it interesting that many Students who are in school right now, they're hoping to be promoted. I think it was quite remarkable that our, our podcast was stationed at the end of the year. Sorry, mm-hmm. our anniversary. Anniversary. Because we, our anniversary happens in the promotional town. <laughs> what are the boys? <laughs> So, and because the podcast started, and no wonder, the podcast started, started on the, the anniversary. <laughs> and now this season two is ending in the promotional time. Yes. I saw, I saw the new chapter. Am I allowed to peep? From glory to glory. Is how God or is does it. It's interesting that uh, this podcast started when it was a part-time, finding time for my work schedule to put in time for the podcast. The last five months, it has been almost full-time. So, and now I feel there's a new level to it all. I'm expectant. It's a new season. (laughs) How are you? I love new seasons. Amen. I love new seasons because... I think I've learned that there's something about being expectant and not really knowing what to expect. Mm. Which is... um, it's a shift. For me, it's a shift mm. from my natural, my natural self and my natural being. Mm. I like to know what's coming up. I like to know so I can prepare. Yeah. I like to be ready. But I think if there's anything that I've learned over the last two years, is that there's such a joy and such a peace and such... Uh, an expectation when you don't really know what's coming. Because then you're just going with the flow. And interestingly, that's how people in the army, they live their lives. You could be sent to some place and no one may prepare. They just tell you in two weeks, you'll be getting a deployed. And uh, the people who know what they're going to do next are the people who are in charge of their lives. Yeah. But if you have a master, a lord over your life, you don't have that liberty. 
You just have to be ready all the time. Because you do not know when you'll be there. I will follow. When you call me, I will answer. Teach me how to know your will. Loyal one go Vuma. 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 Vuma to you. When you call me, I will answer. When you lead me, I will follow. Oh, my Lord, teach me how to know your will. But how can you know his will? If you don't know his voice, how can you run when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you, mm, if you, you don't, don't know, know the way, way of the spirit? How can you fly when you don't know? <laughs> Power of working you it's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Scallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here. And a little there until the day is done. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Something came to me this morning. I was inspired by something you said that I've heard you say before that you've learned to understand that we're playing on the same team. Yeah. And uh, and I realize we don't pay much attention about the teamwork of marriage. Teams are interesting, whether it's a team in a sports team or it's a team in the workplace. In the workplace. It is people who are not born together. Um, I remember watching that documentary by, about Beckham and he said it was uh, when he went to Real Madrid. I think he was talking to one Brazilian star was on the same team. And people saw them laughing and yet they could, weren't, they were he, the other one couldn't speak English. So the team was so diverse that they didn't even, couldn't speak the same language. Can you imagine? And yet they had to play on the same team. And they had to play on the same team. So they had to figure out and a language. And they had to be one. The same thing in the workplace. Everyone gets the job by merit, not necessarily, but <laughs> most times. But you basically come in alone. But everyone comes from a different walk of life. Some people come from rich backgrounds. Some people come from humble backgrounds. But they come and they have to work together. You have to align to the same vision and purpose yeah. and mission and goal. Yes. And... Uh, the thing that I found interesting, I think, when you were talking was uh, this idea that when you get married, I and you give way for we and us. So that us, that we, is the team. And uh, th th there are things so varied we take lightly. Even when you think about the homes where you grew up, how, the simple thing like how we ate, totally different. Yeah. Totally different. The way we conducted our lives, totally different. And then you come to this two-man team. And you have to, to align 
to become one. How do you become one when each of you had a different way of how you eat? How do you become one if there's only one that has to remain? Which one does it become? Which one does it become? It has to be one that's greater than both of you for a start. As a matter of fact, I found an interesting dynamic about the marriage institution because while we talk about the differences in back upbringing and how we've lived, there are differences that it's men and women. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. How do Venusians and Martians come together as one? And what you start to realize that uh, we have, even before you think about truth, we have such inherent differences. And I think if you don't honor that, you don't know the nature of, uh, of uh, the mission before you the nature of uh, the struggle before you. I think with, because marriage usually is derived out of love, love does not speak of struggle and uh, a mission. Love sounds like a kumbaya of sorts. <laughs> but when you understand these differences, when you look at the statistics of marriages ending in divorce. That tells you this mountain is not easy to climb. The peak is at death, but some people climb and break off along the way. And if you don't come knowing that this journey is not an easy journey, and that reason it's hard is because we are different. There are differences that may be cultural. There may be differences about our bringing. But there are differences that the gender differences. We're living in a world today where um, <laughs> we, we're in the age of transgenderism. Transgender means beyond gender. We know of marriage struggling because of differences in gender. People have read, written books of men are from Mars, men are from Venus. And no, someone is telling you something that gender. there is beyond gender. That gender is a social construct. So on top of the struggle of marriage, you add on the struggle of the times we find ourselves in. Yeah. I was reading uh, a book about Rupert Murdoch. And... Uh, the Sun magazine in the uh, UK in around 1998 was uh, shaming uh, British politicians who were outed as being gay. That's 99. And go back 10 years before that. You see, when you read the story of Solomon Gomorrah, when I used to read, it sounded like a fiction story. It sounded like a fiction story. But the world today is really <laughs> playing out Sodom and Gomorrah. Script. Yeah. It's, it just blows your mind. You wonder how can a people, their conscience be too seared? How can they be too far from God? Because what's happening there is people being far from God. It is, a, it is a man's desire to be free. It is one desiring to be free, unencumbered, one who has no authority above them. <laughs> I see yes. where you're going. Yes. <laughs> there are people who want to be free. That same spirit, when I think about transgenderism, I think about LGBTQ, I think about feminism. feminism. And um, 
it's no surprise that it is the same party, for example, in the U.S., the Democratic Party, that is the supporter of all points of view. And grant they may have a justification for their viewpoints. And that's the nature about life. And I don't fault people for what they believe. I may only fault them when they claim to be Christian and be contrary to the word of God. You get? But it tells you about the spirit of time. It's a spirit that is of people who are not, they're disregarding God. They're rebellious. It's the rebellion. And uh, I'm always fascinated. Uh, today we are in the age of artificial intelligence. Um, computers are becoming more intelligent. Um, talk to chat GPT. It can do amazing things. Uh, there's now Grok uh, by Twitter that has a sense of humor. And one thing that fascinated me I learned about is the biggest risk in AI is the alignment problem. What happens when the interests of uh, mankind diverge with the interests of the AI? I think we kind of know where that will end. Yes. <laughs> Imagine if the robots were to rebel. That's what man does. Man rebels against God. So I've, li I've lived a life where I've tried to be free from the systems of man, but not free enough that I have no authority. Try to rebel. I, I am rebellious <laughs> against uh, conventional wisdom. And if I wasn't rebellious, and look at the time now where the world is telling you that there's no gender, only the rebel can refuse to conform. So being rebellious is not a problem. The key thing I understood is what authority am I under? I'm under the authority of the Most High God. I am under the authority of the Most High God. I am not my own. This life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. This was about teamwork. That these differences between men and women. To make a team work. To make a team work and find a common, find oneness in diversity. Now, most people, <laughs> they like diversity for itself, but many people can't see oneness that comes out of diversity. diversity. That we take what we have and we build the one thing that is different from all of us, and yet it's all of us. And that's what I notice children are in a marriage. Because children come from They're these cool. two people, from different families. They come together and create a thing that has no start beyond the two of the you. Two of you. The two of you create a living thing. Create one thing. The two create one. That is living. It's an embodiment of the union. So you start to realize it's not a partnership that you get in and get out of. Because that union burst into existence. existence. Something else. So if you get out of it, what happens to what was birthed? You can't split it into two. You can't take back your bit. But, but, but it's so-so. You can look at it as children, as a vision of what's possible in a marriage, that two can become one. Literally. Yes. That children are a vision of what, an embodiment of what's possible. That, that two can become one. 
That's why the likes of homosexuality are not biblical. Because those two can't become one. So a marriage that cannot produce oneness cannot be a marriage. Cannot be valid. Because how can they be married if they can't become one? Yeah, I hear you. I see you. But you start to see the world we are in, the detachment from a higher authority and the pursuit of freedom that we start to engineer as we are led, as our, we are led, even though that sometimes we are led in a ways that are incongruent with the design around us, the order around us. But yes, so as we talk about being one, it is possible if you consider the children that come out of marriages. They, 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 they cannot argue against the oneness. As a matter of fact, if the two of you are no longer there, they are orphaned. Because they are, they are a product of a certain union. Absent of that union, they are orphaned. They need to be adopted. Because the union that birthed them is no more. That's how real it is. Sounds so simple and yet it is not in, in practice. It's not that simple in practice, being because of our inherent unyielded nature hmm. that desires to have its way. There's something about being yielded that presents a at the very surface level, it presents a position of weakness. Hmm. It's like you've given up everything that you have. Um, presents a position of inferiority hmm. because you are submitted. Hmm. Because your life is not your own. Hmm. The idea of your life being not your own, yeah. depending on what side of the table you are at, can be quite uncomfortable. Mm. And yet, <laughs> if your life is not your own and it belongs to one greater and one higher than you, yeah. guess who's carrying that crown? Who's carrying the weight of it? Mm. I think it's actually a fairly easier life. Mm. Because the one to whom one is submitted is carrying the weight. Mm. Because I've literally laid down my life. Mm -hmm. I have submitted my life mm. to you. When I submit my life to God, then God has to make everything work. Something I've seen. And something I was meditating on yesterday. That um, for you to be submitted, you must be willing to fail. We often want to be in charge because we don't want to fail. It takes a lot of trust to let go and trust that someone else is holding us. There's a sudden confidence in knowing you are holding yourself. It's another, it requires so much trust to give your life to another. Yeah. And there are many of us that are holding on while God is holding us. 
and we are weary and tired because we're holding on because we can't let go and trust him let go my soul and trust in him the waves and wind still know his name the need interesting how we speak of things in the moment and you find song that ties to them and that's the part that's why any time i find a divergence in us it disturbs me if we have one spirit how can we can we not be aligned someone sang that song many years ago we are talking right now and what we are saying is aligned to the song it's the same spirit i don't know where that person was probably not in uganda but yet here in uganda 2023 we are talking about something in the same spirit so i started to realize that in the spirit there is no time and place because you can find alignment from a different time with a present time yeah and you're saying mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you think i'm still there <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we muga ogo la Gukulo kutanga guva munze Nsiji yeze komera Wali wo muga ogo mula Muyimba imba Yesu kwe muka Ogo bula Gukulu kuta mashaka tara wose teke Muve Wali wo muka Ogo bula I found something powerful. There's an essay that that just come that we shared about children being birthed out of a marriage. And it's interesting it came out in the very first podcast we did. We talked about children and divorce. Yes. Mm. How it's does come full circle, hasn't it? You picked my mind. <laughs> I'll just seeing the circle. It's come full the circle, circle starts where it ends. Zero and two hundred sixty degrees at the same point. <sighs> How is it that where you started is where you end? So it was said as come full circle, but I'm in a meditate on what it means to come full it's circle. Okay. To the start is the end. Alpha, you've brought us, Lord. We come to honor you. How's the one your marriage been? Is it one or two years? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one. <laughs> this year. Ah, it's been two years. I I can't think of it as one and one. But I think it's good to reflect on this year this because one. It's, if you think of each marriage and iteration of every year, that every anniversary is another celebration. <sighs> so it's not a celebration of the whole. But we celebrated the year before. Yes, we did. For me, it's sort of it's a continuation. So for me, it's it's, it's incremental. But if you incremental, then you celebrate the, the increment. Yeah, if but you're just doing in a my retrospective. Mind, 
in my mind, I don't separate the two because it just feels like it's been like that. <laughs> it just one flowed into the other. One was a continue. It's like a sequel. And yet you think about each movie in the sequel separate. Ironically, I don't. But maybe it's an issue with my memory. I don't. I don't think of them as separate. I just think of them as one flowing thing. But maybe it's, it's a difference in, in how people are, we are wired and how our brains work. Maybe it's easier for me to think of it as one thing. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, too. My God. Honestly, I, I, I'm trying to remember where Yatu started from. Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the place and time, in terms, of the, in terms of the events, in terms of where I was at as a person, in terms of what I was thinking, in terms of the things we were grappling with, it just feels like it came and went by so fast. Like I closed my eyes and I opened them and it was gone. And yet I am conscious of the distinct difference between year one and year two. Hmm. I am conscious of it. I'm conscious of the fact that I think in year two for me, there was, it felt like year one was that, that, that season for just God revealing me to me, hmm. you know, just showing me putting a mirror in front of my face and showing me who I was, you know, and showing me how far I was from where I ought to be. And then year two was okay. So now you see who you are or who you have been or who you became over 20, 30, you know, 40 years of your life. Hmm. And then year two was, this is who I want you to become. Hmm. This is who I see you as. And this is who you are going to become. Mm. But you cannot become this person if you continue with certain things that you carried mm. over the last 30, 40 years of your life. We're going to have to undo these things. Mm. And there was a clear, for me it was very clear that it was going to be a we. Mm. It couldn't be an I anymore. Mm. Because it's, it felt almost like I had been given one whole year mm. to try and I had been given one year mm. to try and fix myself, fix myself, and I couldn't fix myself. Mm. So it felt like year two of marriage was, so I've given you a shot. Clearly, you can't do this on your own. Mm. We have to do this. Mm. We cannot do this if you're still trying to fix yourself. Hmm. Because I think there was a part of me that kept thinking, I need to fix this. Hmm. And the more I tried to fix things, the more I tried to fix things that were wrong, as far as I'm concerned, the more I failed. Hmm. But I became conscious that we, that we had three people in it. Hmm. It wasn't just God and I. Hmm. Because God works through people. It's like God, your husband, and you. Mm. That, that union of three is what's going to fix this. But that union of three, fixing this cannot work unless you are at the bare minimum yielded mm. to the one that you can see. Hmm. Because if you cannot be yielded to the one that you can see, if you cannot be submitted to the one that you can see, then you can only speak of submission to me in your mind. It can, you cannot be submitted to me. Hmm. If you cannot count on and trust the one whose flesh you can actually see, how can you trust a God you've never seen? Hmm. So I became conscious I became aware of the fact that more than anything, I needed to be submitted to my husband. Hmm. The how in that moment wasn't my problem. All I needed to do was be submitted. Hmm. Because if I had tried to figure it out, I don't think I would have. Because everything in me would have rebuilt. 
because my inherent nature or our inherent nature is one of rebellion. Hmm. That which I desire to do, I do not do. Hmm. So I just needed, I had one simple task, start yielding to your husband. It wasn't easy. Some things were easier. Others I'd be like, a saga. Hmm. Not going to happen. <laughs> hmm. Not going to happen. I'll hear him. I'm listening to what you're saying, but not going to happen. <laughs> when you say that, I'm reminded of uh, a Luganda proverb <laughs> that a friend of mine we used to love and used to ponder on. Hmm. It says, Amanya me manye gama levita embuga. <laughs> and uh, manya me manye is like the strength that knows itself. Um, is that uh, you will keep trying to carry all it, these. It damaged it. it Ebita are color, like color bashes. Yes. yes. I think all of them broke. Because you keep, you're, trying the to lift, you're trying to lift this thing yes. but on your own because you're like, yes. I can do this, I can yes. do this. So it's that place of one who's too confident in themselves. And there's someone who wants to help them. Like, no, 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 no. It's okay, I'll carry my things. And that breaks. And they still continue, I'll carry my things. And Until that they breaks. finish all the calabashes. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much where I was. So I came into year one with that consciousness and of course, like I said, there was a part of me that wanted to figure out how it was going to work. How exactly does this yielding thing work? What are the parameters, <laughs> you know? And do I still get to keep a little bit of myself? But adventure, I need it. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, it's... <sighs> I've seen something interesting. Shoot. Shoot your shot. <laughs> As I said, this relationship, this marriage, has three people. You submit to your husband, your husband. they submit to Christ. But one hard part is this camera captures two of us, and Christ yeah, is outside the frame. Yeah. And some people, what disturbs them is why when we are talking, they don't hear about submission in this firm. But if they could listen into this firm, they could hear my submission. Did you get it? Yeah. So they wonder why it is your shortcomings coming up. Every time we talk about submission. They don't submission. know that mine are here. But it's out of the firm. But also, I would never have been able to submit if you are not submitted. That's a given. You needed to be submitted. You see? You need to be submitted. Because how else will I... <sighs> see how far you've brought me. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting about submission. And it's the nature of, uh, of people that they hear we, human beings struggle with dimension. When dimensions become complex, we struggle to comprehend them. For instance, when you submit to me, there's a responsibility for me to lead. Absolutely. Now, if I don't, if I'm not submitted to God, and I don't have the wisdom that comes with submission to God, then I can't lead. You can't. So people think that submission is just a thing that a woman does. If submission is a woman letting go, like we are standing and she leans back towards me, she leans back into me, 
it means I have to carry her. So most of us think of submission as a woman getting on the ground and a man walking over her. But not in the sense the woman letting go and the man carrying her. The man now has two weights. He has to support yes. himself and support her. But if he's submitted, then he has someone else someone supporting him, him as well. Yeah. yeah. But we never see them like that. And those dimensions are so critical because a lot of conflict is dimensional. I found it interesting that many times when I called out something, <laughs> Yoris would have an excuse. <laughs> I think you said it's not an excuse, so what? It's a reason. It's a, it's a justification. <laughs> There's a time you made me f uh, Google the meaning of, of excuse because he felt excuse had a <laughs> negative connotation. Which it does. And yet yours was a more <laughs> potato potato. <laughs> but I was thinking to myself about this idea of doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place. If someone is doing the right thing, in the wrong place and you call it out they will defend the fact that they were doing the right thing they're doing the right thing the dimension of the place eludes them the dimension of time eludes them a person can be out of their time a person can start to do things out of time or out of place. It's actually a word we, that's in a, in a social language. Out of place. Mm. It's yeah, out, of it's place. out of place. It's, yes. it's not in order. Yes. If it's out of place, it can also be out of time. Mm. And, and that's a problem when, when people, we are, we are always on the defense. Because on the defense, you can defend yourself. If you're doing the right thing at the wrong time, you have a defense because you're doing the right thing. But if someone else is bringing you the enlightenment at the time is wrong, without a sudden humility, you won't see it. And that's the scary part about life. It's when Steve Jobs gave a commencement speech at Stanford, I never forget that speech. He ended it by saying, stay hungry, stay foolish. stay foolish. Those words stuck with me for years, trying to understand what it means. Stay hungry, stay foolish. And I understood them as, never be satisfied, always remain hungry. And it's quite fascinating, I was watching yesterday a documentary about Sylvester Stallone. And uh, when he hit the peak of his career, he started to struggle because he lost the hunger that he had when he was beginning. It is hard to sustain hunger. Yeah. Yet hunger is what that brings forth. It's what keeps pushing you. The woman who's not yet married <laughs> the way she prays to God for a partner. Ah, man, it's different, eh? Then God can bring that partner and she starts to forget how much she prayed for this. Because <laughs> one who was hungry is no longer hungry. I learned to stay foolish. That's the way you learn. When I see people who dismiss knowledge, I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't dismiss it. There's a place I have in me where I can listen to someone. I don't believe them, neither do I doubt them. I just receive. Room. I just receive until I see it. I don't refute it, neither do I accept it. Now that's a critical place of one who stays foolish. Because we know in part. There's much more we don't know than we know. 
Mm. And that humility to listen. Now, the unfortunate part, I think, sometimes in marriage is where two parties are trying to defend themselves. Each one is trying to defend their territory. There are moments where people forget we're on the same team and they start to defend themselves. You see that in Uganda. Uganda is actually a testament of a marriage, is uh, an image of a marriage that is... Uh, so dysfunction. I may not add the so. <laughs> Okay. But that is uh, the ground is not so solid because you find people still going back to their tribal uh, instincts and tribal relations, even though they are they are meant to be a nation. You understand me? And why that happens is that how do you become a nation as Uganda? when the people in Uganda have unique individual cultures. <coughs> the Muganda operates as a Muganda. The Mugisu operates as a Mugisu. When do they operate as Uganda? What makes them Uganda? Now, these are the dilemmas that people encounter in marriage. Ugandans couldn't agree on a national language. The Mugisu didn't want to use the other language. The Muganda didn't want to do the other language. The Munyankole didn't want to use the other language. They actually didn't want to use the other language. So they could not, they were not willing to die to become one. It is a people coming into marriage and they want to retain everything they had before. before. No knowing the way marriage is a place of oneness. You're mad together, married together. The oil and the water can no longer be discerned because they've all blended into this oneness. They've dissolved into one another. Now, there are people who work in marriage like Uganda. And it gets worse when now <laughs> already a normal marriage can reflect the Ugandan scenario. Now imagine the multicultural marriage <laughs> where the husband and wife operate in the culture of their ancestors, yet they are forgetting that they are creating a oneness. The children who are coming out of this are both, but they fail to actually create the oneness for children to walk in. You just can't do it without God. No. But at the heart of it all, you can't do it with God without God, but that's fascinating. I remember having this realization that people who are waiting God and yet God is waiting for them. Is many times we underestimate how much power God has given us. I don't think we underestimate the, how much power God has given us. Sometimes we actually don't know. But also we understand that. Yeah, that's why I said sometimes we don't Because understand. when you think the level of power he has given, the Bible, actually the reason I say underestimate because the Bible states it. Mm. But sometimes he has don't given know. you <laughs> dominion. Most Christians have read that part. They've heard that part, reiterated. I think we like that dominion in a certain context. Thank you. <laughs> but they do not understand the power. It's to the <laughs> level that even for God to redeem mankind, he had to send yes. his son here. Because only, his, only his man order. had power. You see? So, the grace can be sufficient. And if you're standing, God can use you. If the peop my people are called by my name, shall humble, shall humble themselves pray. and pray and seek my face. Seek my face. Turn away from their evil ways. Yes. I'll hear and from, I shall heaven hear from heaven and, heal their land. and come and heal their land. He has to, we have to do something before Thank he you. comes from heaven to heal this Thank land. He He's created a, a mechanism. Like, just give me an He's opportunity. He's created a system. Give me an opportunity and I come heal your land. But when a lot of the things we are struggling with because we are not yielded, 
we are not yielded. We are in this marriage, but everyone has, for me, this is what I want. You phone me and people tell you you need to learn to compromise. People tell you, you're, do, do you, everyone do your thing. <coughs> you get? Um, yeah. I don't even know how this one is connected to what we're saying, but it just dropped. <laughs> I don't know how it's connected. So. Which one? Holy fire <laughs> burn upon this altar from within me spirit you take over Holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon this altar. Amen. When two years of marriage, another year down. I don't know why, I like... I think I, I celebrate the year. And for the longest time, I used to track my growth in terms of my mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. I remember so vividly when I was around 26, I used to write articles on every birthday. And uh, the most important age for me at the time was at 30, because that's when Jesus started his ministry. And I felt a certain significance of 30 and uh, where is my 30 going to be what's the state of my 30 and uh, yeah but now it seems I won't believe this <laughs> you've suddenly realized where your 30 started from no mm. when I was single I tracked my progress on my birth year now we are married. I track it on the anniversary. I sing marriage. The people celebrate. There's a lady who celebrates her birthday with her girls every year. And she never thought to celebrate the anniversary. So the, the identity of one is more important and the identity of two. To that one. To that two that become one. Because the anniversary is the one. Is a shared, is a shared one. It's actually, you see, if you think about oneness, think about marriage as a person. And that person has a birth year. They were born on 13th November in our case. 2021. Yes. The marriage brings forth children. The marriage builds a house. Now there are many of us who you built your house there. The husband built his house. The marriage has no house. The marriage starts a business. The marriage buys a car. The marriage makes money. Why it's a powerful idea. Legally, the moment you become married, even all the resources you guys get are 50-50 by law. But why is it we have not aligned to that? You see you driving your car. You have your car. He has his car. You, you deal with your parents, he deals with his parents, not your parents. What about the parents in the marriage? What about the siblings of the marriage? What about the birth of the marriage? There's such a place where the things that I've won 
of greater importance than the things are for the, that are for the individual. Let's agree to disagree. Do you, I do me. And the people made a vow of violence and now chosen to live apart. And they start by disagreeing in those little things. Next thing you know, each one wants their own bed mm -hmm. because they feel this person sleeps badly. I need my peace. So they're going to get two beds. The marriage now has torn apart into two. Is it still a marriage? The marriage ends up getting neglected. And it's fascinating. When two people by law start a company, that company is a legal entity. It can be sued, it can even sue. Isn't that interesting? That a company can become, by law, a thing that is real. Bagulo musango, kuchitongole. A, a case can be brought against a company. I dare imagine that in the spirit, a case can be brought against a marriage. Just as a case can be brought against a nation. <sighs> yeah. When one person among the children of Israel took of the accursed things that God had told Joshua shouldn't touch, the judgment came onto the entire nation of Israel. The nation takes on a certain place of oneness that even judgment is made to the nation. So there's a place because the two became one. When your husband takes a certain debt, they could repossess the properties of the family. Of the family. Because you're one. But how many times that we can consider some of these things in a physical realm but we cannot consider them in the spirit. Isn't that interesting? That a judgment can be made against a marriage. Now imagine the sadness when judgment comes on a marriage and yet the two of you are sleeping in different beds. <laughs> so which means the marriage cannot defend itself. You're legally, you're both liable, and yet there's no you're not one to defend it. So you cannot put up a a strong case. Thank you. When two one, when two people agree on a matter Shall be shall be. There's a part where God talks about when you put two people pray and ask, they shall receive. The two agree and ask. So their marriages are not effective, even because in the, the spirit, because the two are not agreed. So you're wondering why you're poor in your marriage, but because the marriage is apart. I've, I've noticed about... Actually, the marriage is technically not a marriage. I've noticed about the memes that happen in this country because I, I think they may have a clue into the zeitgeist of the time, the spirit of the time. The, the meme that has been seen show up often is... Uh, and it's, very, it's very loud in this yes. season. The women saying the men, the men saying the women will give up on them, they do what they want. Now, we also have children saying we've given up yes. on parents. Now, interestingly, some of those people <coughs> sharing that meme are couples. And while they may laugh <laughs> they about it, they actually relate. So the marriage was abandoned. Everyone does what they want. And they, they call it liberty. They coexist in the same space. Everyone's doing their own thing. You start a company, but everyone 
trade separately out of it. It's not a company, it's just something waiting to collapse. Something waiting to collapse. Very young. But we thank God with what he's been able to do with this marriage in the last one year. And what we have been able to do with alongside him in the last one year. I uh, I noticed I, I I understood the level of growth when I was having uncomfortable conversation with someone. And the level of calm the minister's tone. Who is this someone? Hmm? Who is this someone? Doesn't matter. Okay. And the the managed to find the calm amidst the storm. Like I could, I could feel, I want you to imagine water boiling, like loudly. Brrr, and yet it was not crossing that threshold. And that quietness, marriage has built that in me. Hallelujah to the lamp. <laughs> and I think it's because I was, when we had un- moments of disagreement, I did not just let you do what you do, what you did, wanted to do, but I made my case. And sometimes making my case, the response was of one who felt offended or wrongly accused. And the way the response came was in a way that could sometimes be lethal. And I learned in those moments, stand still and know that he Mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. There's no need to fight for the battle battle is is not not yours. I learned how to stand still. And it's like as though there's a muscle I've built. It's like an exercise. There's a muscle I've built. I can have a conversation with someone who's emotionally flipping out and land them safely. They will lose themselves and I won't lose mine. In the first year of marriage, some of things would hit me different. But now, <laughs> to one counting it's amazing and oh what an opportunity to preach the gospel you know, what's exciting about this one? In senior one, I used to go in front of the class. Clearly, I was, I think it was the naivety of a child. I used to go to a class and I preach. I remember you preaching during break time or lunch time. So kids are doing what they want. It's not a church for who showed up. They want to listen to you like, dude. Some people are probably throwing book papers at you even. No, they are in that time. Well, that decent. <laughs> so it's you. Do you know what it means to speak to an audience that's really not necessarily interested? You'll get a interview. Of all your girl. <laughs> like, they did not show up. They don't come looking for you to listen. You went in front of the class that is shared with everyone else and decided to minister. But it was sort of like a culture, I think, in school, the scripture union people would go in front of class and preach. And uh, yes, I, I remember I used to go in front of class and I would preach. 
until senior two and I had a crush on this babe. And you couldn't preach. <laughs> Suddenly you lost your moral authority. <laughs> the carnality started to kick in. <laughs> right? So the joy is to imagine that on this podcast, I actually get to preach publicly without reservation. And with no time limit. Do you know what that means? You see, there's a there's a place of having a personal relationship with God. But then there's a place when you go and start to minister for Him. I, I, are you getting it? There's a time when you're walking with God. People are going walking with God on a personal journey, trying to go through different challenges, and God is coming out for them. But it's another when they are being ministers of God to the world. It is, it's, not only are you receiving from God, but you're also you. serving God. Yeah. And this podcast has been a great blessing. That I've been laboring in the kingdom. That we've labored in the kingdom. There are Christians who have been in a place and have not preached to anyone the entire year. Then when non-believers at workplace bring funny conversations. You don't even have the courage to. The least you can do is to laugh about it. The, the, the most you can do is to laugh about it and not engage. But you can't even tell them it's wrong. Neither can you tell them about Christ. How many of us have workmates who are walking in sin and you don't shine the light? And of course there's the devil who who will tell you, mm, you, you are talking, where did you get the license to talk? And that tells you about the grace of God that's given us the strength to minister. The people who tell us, what do you have to say about marriage? Are you that perfect? The people calling out the shortcomings, this and this and that mm -hmm. and this, but at the end of the day, Christ is preached. Yeah. Christ is preached. <sighs> And if there's anyone who hasn't yet given their life to Christ, at the end of this call, we're going to do an altar call. And you say the words at the end, and at the end of this episode, you'll be saved. To accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Otherwise, everything that we've said for the last two years, last one year, it's interesting. Nothing. In the world that is getting to people being more free, aware of authority, even their mental health struggles are increasing. But they cannot connect the two. The farther they go, <laughs> the farther they fall. Because they've lost anchoring. They've lost the anchor. And yet the way back is so, seems so far away and yet it's so easy. It's the way of surrender. It's actually the way of surrender. And that's the thing about, that's the thing about God. He loves us without a doubt. He loves his creation. He loves all of us. But he doesn't strive with all of us. I mean, we're talking about a God who leaves the 99 and pursues the one. Yeah. That's love. Yeah. If you could dare leave the 99 which might scatter yeah. to pursue the one, say something about how important we are to him. Yeah. And all he needs is for us to come to the end of ourselves. Yeah. Come That's to true. the end of yourself. Yeah. Because I cannot force myself. Yeah. You. you have to choose. Yeah. You have to choose. I put before you life and death. Choose life. Choose life. Yeah. It's a choice. It's, and there are times when I can be so random in my head and I'm like, it must be so hard being God. Yeah. 
when you see people that you so dearly love. Yeah. People that you created and you knew you created them in your image. Yeah. And they were good and they were perfect and you love them and you'd have all these great plans and your desires for them. And you even made a way for them to be reconciled to you. You actually made a way for them to be reconciled to you. Yeah. And still their hearts have been hardened. Yeah. And you're like, if only you could give me a chance. And I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm always just overwhelmed at a God who is so grand and so big. I mean, the creator of the universe. And my, my, my small mind cannot even comprehend what the universe is like, but the creator of the universe just desires that I would come to him. <sighs> and... Uh... In all honesty, everything we've talked about marriage, I don't think it's possible without God. No. If Jesus Christ is not Lord over your life, while I wish it would work for you, I don't think it can work without Him as your Lord. No. And uh, if you're watching this podcast, and you'd like to give yourself, your life to Jesus Christ, that he may be Lord over your life. I'd like to ask you to say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I've done many things that don't please you. I've lived my life for myself only. I am sorry and I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for me to save me. You did what I could not do for myself. I come to you now and ask you to take control of my life. I give it to you. From this day forward, help me to live every day for you and in a way that pleases you. I love you, Lord, and I thank you that I will spend all eternity with you. Amen. And if you say that prayer, it's that simple. You're saved. It is not enough to worship. You are inexhaustible. I daily offer me a living sacrifice That's my reasonable service to you It is to you The lifting of my voice It is to you The marriage started with God. It's interesting that the anniversary is celebrated with an altar call. At least that's a reminder. Who is Lord in our home? Who is Lord in our marriage? Who is Lord in our lives? To whom much is given, much is also required. My life is not my own, to you I belong, I give myself, I give myself to you, I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use me. Give myself away. Hey. I 
Give myself away so you can you see. Cause you provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. Marriage cannot be carried by one person. So I thank you for working with me. Thank you for choosing me to For work. two years. And counting. And counting. We wouldn't have been the same without you. And for one year we've done this podcast together. Not one time did you say, I don't want to do it again. No matter how hard the going may have been to one moment to another, we've stayed moving. And I am persuaded that what's coming after is greater than one than what we had seen. And I'll end with the words I said at our wedding. I did love you. The God did not give me a chance to love you. <laughs> I am persuaded. He just cut. cut my heart and put your love inside it. <laughs> and no matter what happens, nothing can take away the love God has put inside me. I hope as uh, I've walked these two years, you can bear witness, you can testify that they weren't mere words or that they weren't just words. So thank you. In the spirit of recounting some of the things that we said at the wedding, Dearest Felix, when I say this is the day that the Lord has made, then I choose to rejoice and be glad. These are not just words, but it's truly how I feel about today, the day you and I become one. And I'd say those words all over again. Even with all the battle scars, <laughs> Scars are what make it so beautiful because they remind of victories that we've had. Yeah. They're not reminders of, of pain. Yeah. They're reminders of the victories that we've had. Yeah. And they're an encouragement of how much farther we're going to go. Yeah. Because God has only just begun. Yeah.